Well, what's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. We're going to continue our work to do series. We wanted to cover for the bottom six teams and talk a little bit about the things you need to work on with matches coming up this weekend and next weekend, the last set of three to four, depending on the team matches before they go to Boston. For some of these teams, they are very much in danger of not starting in the winner's bracket and having to start from the loser's bracket, which means it would be single elimination. So let's take a look at those teams. Let's take a look at the results they've had so far, map records, individual stats, and talk about some of the things we're gonna be looking forward to seeing. They hopefully work on uh starting on friday all right so on the last video we covered vegas carolina and minnesota you see are the bottom three teams in the ranking i did prior to or uh christmas or after the second week of matches i'm not going to redo this tier list until uh monday after this next set of matches but i want to in this video talk about lag Thieves and Boston, who I'm a little bit more optimistic as a group, more so than Minnesota, Carolina, and Vegas, but I still think at least one of those teams is going to start in losers. So let's start off with LAG and talk about their um, road to this major, this campaign so far. So they played three teams so far, Toronto, New York, and LA Thieves. In that Toronto match, they got completely outclassed in all the respawns, but they did look good in s and High Rise. And it was the same thing again versus New York. They kind of got, um, you know, unfortunate in that round 11 but the respawns were actually really close against New York. They won one of the hard points, got pretty close to winning the Karachi. The control they didn't end up winning, and then the SD won close. I actually think LAG of, of these three uh, series, I thought LAG played really good in this one. I think there was definitely a role where they could have been, you know, two and one because they had the surprise three and zero, clean three and zero victory against LA Thieves. They had that round eleven on Karachi. That was a little bit hilarious. But other than that, you know, I think for LAG, you kind of probably take the start. They've looked competitive in two of the three series. Toronto, listen, they're gonna be in a different class of team from LEG, but they look competitive against another top four team. They look great against these. And we scroll over and take a look at their map records. There are a couple, there's two maps in particular that I wanna highlight that I'm very curious to see if teams adjust going forward. I know we are playing a new spawn since, um, you know, the last uh, uh, matches prior to Christmas. The first one is sub base hardpoint. They've played it in every series so far and they're two and one on the map. And I've heard in scrims that they are still really good in this map now they have some interesting upcoming opponents they may square up on this and might get banned against them so we'll see but you look at the rest of their map pool they haven't yet won another hard point you gotta think maybe teams might be want to remove sub base and the same thing goes for high rise s and d you see here they are two and oh but even doing on control sorry uh on high rise uh, we'll get to s and d in a second um definitely you think teams might remove high rise control and play them on an invasion or Karachi, a little more of a straight up map. I also think high rise SD they've looked really good at. They had that round 11 loss in New York, but I thought they looked really good um, on it against Toronto. So I think in, in general, maybe high rise uh, might be a, a map that gets banned a little bit uh, against these teams combo with sub base. As you look at the Karachi record, you look at the invasion record, like I'd be trying to play them on these two maps sort of in general, if you think about this team. Haven't played a skid row or a terminal yet. We'll see if that holds going to the next set of matches here. Now, one thing for me that I'm optimistic for LAG is kind of the foundational of their search play right now. Small sample size, four maps. Let's not super overthink it, but they have been very clean in their execution and search. Um, they've won 22 of the 42 rounds. They've gotten first blood and they've won 19 of those. So they've only choked a couple of rounds, which is fine. 86% uh, is, is up there with the best teams in the league now, mind you, they play a lot of high rise so far. So we got to see how it kind of evens out once you kind of play other maps in the pool. But I like the execution uh, so far from LAG. If we kind of scroll through, you see offense. They have, they did throw away three plants and that might be the three rounds theoretically in this that they may have been tossing. But overall, I think a lot to like foundationally for LAG in search, which is why I'm a little more optimistic for them compared to say like a Carolina or a Vegas. You see overall slang actually looks pretty good. Diamond Khan's been their best player, which to me is not really a surprise. I think he got unlucky last year, not getting uh, called up, you know, do them keeping Alec on the team. He has proven this year, he's very good. I think the one, two, one in search is definitely very high. And it looks like he's a high rise SD like best player in, maybe in the game on that map. But uh, let's see where that goes. You see a couple other players have struggled in search. So I want to see how that mounts out. They look good in the response. I like what I've seen from LAG so far as a team. To me, I've heard they've been one of the teams that's practiced the most over the break compared to a lot of other teams at the bottom. So I do think that uh, there are not in particular any players on this roster right now that I'm like saying are on the hot seat because I think as a team, they're playing, you know, decent and have given themselves a really good start and an ability to maybe make winner's bracket. I also don't think LAG 
we're gonna really make any changes this year considering their team situation so for me i think the biggest thing for leg is going to come down to you know executing against the better teams in the league i actually think that this team's got a decent chance against the mid-pack of teams and taking a look who they face during major one it's actually to me a schedule in which I could theoretically see them getting three wins with the schedule. They play Atlanta phase first match on Friday. I'm going to be honest, just like in the Toronto series, maybe they take a map, but I think phase is going to kind of scream the money, uh, the response. Don't really see it, but Boston rocker and Miami. And as good as Miami has been, I kind of like the end of the schedule for LAG. We're going to talk about Boston in a second. We talked about Minnesota on the last video and I'm a little iffy on this team. The kind of master none in game modes. To come to an SD, game five SD, I feel more confident in LAG than I do in Rocker right now. And then Miami played really well before the break. Uh, but, you know, you never know, kind of depending on the needs of this match of LAG, if Miami's kind of locked into a mid seed at some point um, and LAG's kind of playing to make to winner's bracket, you never know. Or they might be, you know, uh, you know, three and three at this point, and then it's just a case of seeding for both teams. But, you know, for me, I actually think LAG got a really good draw here. Um, and I won't be surprised. I really won't be surprised. LAG ends up being like the seventh or the eighth seed going into major one. I don't know if that's going to be good enough for them to get some like crazy top six placing because I still think that um, when you look at sort of the, the outlay of like the top five teams in the league, I do think this team, you know, was going to have some good maps, but once teams kind of play them on some different maps, like we've seen with LAG last year, right? Remember when they first made those roster changes, People were scoring up with them on like Embassy Hardpoint, the best LAG Academy maps. Once people adjust to this team, their results might times might, might try to uh, might kind of decrease as far as their win conditions. But I like to start from LAG, and I'm curious to see if they continue it. I'm more optimistic on them than say Vegas or Carolina, for example. All right, let's talk about the LA Thieves. They played four matches. LAG played three matches before the break. And for Thieves, it's been you know a really difficult ride. I'm going to be honest, including that a massive 3 0 stomping by LAG we just talked about. You look at the map and mode records here, and there's there's nothing really to be happy about here. Two and two in control, and only one win a hard point of one S and D in four matches is crazy to me. I, there's the the level of execution here from LAG is just or uh, from Thieves rather is unacceptable. And you look at the map, uh, sort of the the game map records against the schedule they've had so far. They are one one map against Seattle in their first match out. The hard points were close, but Thieves managed to toss both of them we broke that down on the flank phase stomped them um i guess all the maps were decently close i don't think the control evasion was there's one of those like game five or i don't think phase is ever really in danger of losing that one i think the evasion was a little bit back in a fourth and the the hard point i think phase controlled for most of it leg kind of made it close on like a p1 or p2 i think but phase was pretty much not controlling that map the boston series is a nice one from thieves they really need to have that one against a boston team that was also kind of struggling and there was a pretty Solid 3-0, but then they had a real sticker against LAG going into break. So I don't really know what to think of this Thieves team. We'll get about individual execution, but it's really not at a good level. I've heard their practice sometimes a little bit iffy with this team, asking people around the league and people close to the camp. There's a lot of concerns that, you know, people on this team of different levels of experience are really not locked in on trying to get better every day. And there's just a lot of blaming of external factors, connection, play styles, just not a lot of focus on trying to get better after each map. So that could potentially be sort of a team killer for Thieves. The one in thing in particular, I think that's sort of apparent looking at the stats for LA Thieves is actually their inability to win offenses in search again, small, small sample size, but they have uh, one of the lowest win percentages in uh, offense of any team in the league right now. And they're really, really struggling to get first bloods in those rounds of 19 rounds. They played on offense. They've only got six first bloods. Only team worse than that is uh, Carolina. Now, when they have won those offenses, they have won those rounds other than one round, which they planted the bomb and they weren't able to win that, which I assume they would have planted probably man down. Otherwise, the first blood win stat wouldn't make much sense here. But uh, either way, for me, um, I think they've got to figure out how to win O's. I know Thieves, if you take a look at the map, and this is sort of context that's important, you know, they have played um, most of the maps so far. They played three of the five. Two on Invasion, one on Karachi, and one on Terminal. So there's a good mix there to kind of pull from across the four maps so far. So I want to see them do a better job on winning their O's. Um, this team, because I think Respawn, from what I've seen so far, really, I just don't think this team's got the crazy firepower Respawn. They've got to get better at search. They want to have better win conditions in this series. Because, I, I mean, we, we could talk about the hard point. I just, 
with this team comp right now and maybe we take a look at the individual stats like i just don't think i just don't see how this team is going to become some stellar respawn team especially in hardpoint i'll be honest with you guys you see for pretty much everybody on this team like they've got probably one game mode that they've done decent so far but it's been a mixed bag for everybody and there's not a lot of like even performances across the board to me the player that I think is probably the most under scrutiny right now would be Cami. I'm just tired of, of this conversation of when is Cold War Cami gonna come back. Let's just be honest. At this point, I think he was a one game wonder as far as career goes. Um, and he has not been able to hit at that level in Vanguard last year or this year. And I don't know if it's a mentality thing or some kind of other issue, but uh, the performances they need from him on this team, they're not getting. These individual stats are not good through uh, four matches. And he's got to step it up or he might find himself off the roster. Afro, kind of a similar thing. This duo didn't work on Minnesota. And I was um, surprised, I guess, a little bit that they ran it back on the Steve's team. I will say kind of stepping out a little bit before we step back in. I never expected or I didn't think Steve's was going to be some championship contender this year. I thought they'd be a little bit more organized and better. But I assumed the goal for Thieves this year was to find one or two cornerstone players to build around going forward, considering that their championship caliber team kind of broke up in the offseason. I thought maybe... The Afro or Cami can kind of find their form again, and it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Uh, Dan Ghosty's been been good, but again, going back to the sort of practice issues, I won't be surprised if Dan is part of that. I mean, we've seen it when you watch him stream, like, you know, he's high strong, so he's got to figure out how to manage that. But I think Dan's uh, got a chance on this roster going forward because I think he's pretty talented. And unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot out of Joe DeSeeves um, and could potentially also be someone that's in the hot seat as a player. He had a tough LEG situation last year. That team didn't, had no way to get better. Let's just say that. But expecting a jump from him this year, and we haven't seen it so far. And, you know, look, it's early in the season, but it's January 10th. The game came out in November. It's been a couple of months. We want to see players take the leap. And so far in this team, three of the four players haven't seen it from them individually. Unfortunately for Thieves, I think they're probably going to be in a good chance of making losers bracket because they got Toronto, New York, and Carolina coming up. I don't see how they're going to be either Toronto. I really don't see how they're going to be New York. Carolina is a winnable match, last match, but I don't think two and five is enough to make it in a winner's bracket. And I think likely this Thieves team is going to start in losers. We've seen Thieves teams in the past make a little bit of a losers bracket one run, so I won't be surprised this team finds a way to win two series and losers and maybe makes top six. But I think realistically, this is going to be a, a, a dead last or a top eight team. And they're going to be one of the teams making a bunch of roster changes after major one. I just don't see it. I don't see the path to improvement for this team. I'm, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really in it with the squad. And I think, I, I think they're going to continue to tinker to try and find the right lineup. And, and they're an organization a lot of people want to play for. So I could see them taking advantage of the Toronto and roster made to beat people to a bunch of targets they want. All right, the last team we're going to talk about in this video is the Boston Breach. Just like Thieves, I thought this team would be a little better than how they have performed. And I think maybe they had kind of a tricky schedule. You know, they played three of the top five teams in the league over um, the stretch. And the Thieves series would have been the winnable one, but we'll get to that in a second. Like, you look at the overall map and mode combos. Respawn, they look decent, but the one in four in, in S&D is very, very concerning. It's a common theme, man. With these teams in the bottom six they're all teams that are not very good in search and this boston team has to be good in search it really has to with the players they have in priesta uh in capsule in slash for people that have been on really good search teams to be one and four start is definitely not ideal let's take a look how we got there they had a pretty grinder first series against phase a lot on the line emotionally um and there were some bangers in this i think boston was hard done by that Karachi SND was actually pretty winnable. And I think uh, in that round 11 capsule, you know, again, this comes down to reps. So this was the first match capsule getting picked with his foot sticking out. You know, at B bomb was definitely not ideal, but once the series got to the last map, it was pretty much a done deal on that invasion phase look really good at in the invasion. So um, there was that the Seattle series got off to an interesting start. It's kind of a banger uh, first map, which with Boston kind of clutching at the end of that invasion. Um, but then Seattle uh, took advantage of their terminal prowess and, uh, one three straight from there. And then we get to the Thieves series, and we talked about that earlier. It was a clean series from Thieves. Boston did not log on for that one. And then we get to a inner. This is where like momentum gets weird. Then we get to the one series that Boston has won this year, which is the upset against Toronto, which I thought was pretty clean. Although, mind you, I think Envoy had probably his worst series of pro in the series. But Boston caught Toronto on an off day and were able to get their first win of the season. So going into the break for Boston, like there's some positivity that they're making, you know, progress on. The little things with their squad but listen as i mentioned across this video like uh this video series the common theme when you think about all the teams at the bottom is their inability to 
really like close out rounds and search. And uh, if you're going to give good search teams, which is, I mean, if you look at the list right now, you know, Toronto and Optic go over here, but I think they're like one and two, two, two and three. You see FaZe, Miami, New York, Mr. your top five are up here. What kind of separates the teams and a team like Boston and the rest of it is, look how many rounds Boston has tossed over the uh, first stretch here. They have played 49 rounds of search, 125 first bloods, which is really good. 51% winning half your, your rounds, getting first blood is great. I'm sorry, not winning those rounds, but getting those first bloods. And then we get to the first blood win percentage. And this team has, if I do the math correctly, they've tossed eight rounds, eight rounds and four maps. Uh, five maps is um, quite a bit. I mean, again, we've talked about where you want this number to be. You want to be in the 70s to 80s. I think the teams up in the 80s are really going to come back down to earth. We've seen some teams end in the 80s historically, but they were I like search teams. Everybody's going to be in the 70s. My point is, I think for Boston, they take advantage of the round wins when they can. They've also had an ability to win offenses, and it's kind of interesting because they've tossed a lot of rounds on offense. They've tossed four of the 10 they've gotten first blood, but winning 30% of your O's, they got to work on that and try and do a better job winning offense on some of these maps. But you can see if they can clean up the offense, the defensive execution's actually been pretty solid. They're winning a lot of first bloods on defense and closing out those rounds. Toss four but 73 percent out of those first bloods like it's not too bad offense definitely the big key hit thing for boston and you know in general when you look at the bigger sample size closing out the rounds is really important that being said i'm very curious kind of how teams are going to kind of adjust playing boston going forward they have played these two maps a lot invasion i think is going to end up in a lot of series and i think if you're an opponent playing boston invasion um considering sort of your sub duo doesn't like to stop sprinting we talked about capsule and snoopy I think I'm fine playing them on that map, but Terminal might be a map that gets kind of pushed to subway side. Play this Boston team, kind of want to see them on maybe a skid row or a sub base if it's going to end up being a pick from Boston. But we'll see if teams kind of stop playing them on this uh, Terminal Hardpoint because they had a decent amount of success so far this year um, on the map. You know, they beat Ball, they beat FaZe on it, beat Toronto on it. They did lose um, to Seattle, but we talked about before the raid, the Seattle's a pretty solid uh terminal hardpoint team it seems like All right, let's take a look at the individual uh stats first off snoopy slang at a high level really not surprising he's got good movement he's got good gunny sometimes his decision making i've noticed is definitely suspect i think he and capsule toss a quite a few situations in that first series against phase uh especially on the evasion hardpoint they just don't stop sprinting they've obviously made an adjustment a little bit since then but i think you're going to kind of roll with the punches with these two not always making the best reads listen we know cap is a good snd player the response are definitely a work in progress for him sometimes he goes off sometimes he's getting smoked let's see if he can find some consistency there i think for me the most surprising here is slasher with a 0.7 in search i know i'll send a couple of real struggle snd maps early we'll see if he finds his footing he can be sometimes a slow starter and definitely inconsistency from priesta we've talked about this last couple of years with him needs to find more consistency in slaying to kind of backfill what are really aggressive young guys that they have in Snoopy and Capsule. So we'll be serious to see if we see more consistency from Preston. I'm going to say probably not. So it's going to kind of put this boss in if they're in a, it's really not apparent who you'd want to drop in a team change is what I'm trying to say. Like you want to continue to build around Snoopy, great, but there are downsides and pros to potentially making a move on the other three players. And I don't think Boston's really even remotely close to thinking about it right now. I don't, I don't think they're really in the five teams. I would think they're making a roster because I think if you look at the Boston schedule here, I think they can still theoretically make winners. LAG is a must win. They have to beat LAG to have a chance to make winners. And then they're going to have to beat at least one of these teams, either Miami or New York to get to three and four. And that should get them in the mix. If not, I think there's a possibility that enough teams get smoked during this stage that maybe, maybe two and five is like the eight seed for a major one maybe i think the likelihood is very low but for boston if you win two out of three here which i think is definitely doable between uh, lag uh miami who you know are going to start playing a higher caliber team um you know on this side of the break and listen i know new york's off to a good start but i haven't been entirely convinced by the way new york is playing and i do think that there are some rumblings there might be something going on in new york situation that maybe in practice they're not always playing the best compared to Days, Toronto, Optic, etc. But obviously, you know, they're the defending champion. So we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. But Boston's got to win two out of three and then they'll make winners. My guess for Boston right now is I think they'll probably be either eighth or sixth. Um, I think predicting to get top four at their home event right now with the things that they have to work on is going to be tough. But we've seen what like Minnesota did last year. Just make winner's bracket. 
You win two series, suddenly you're in winner's finals. Like, you never know. You're getting top three or top four. I can see this Boston team getting hot. They've got enough uh, talent on their team to do it. They just haven't yet figured it out. And I'm waiting to see if they do. So, yeah, that'll do it for this video. Those were my thoughts. And just kind of summarize. I think Boston, Thieves, um, and LAG are teams I'm more high on than, say, Carolina, Vegas, uh, or Rocker. I'll be curious to see if two out of three here do end up making winners a bracket. They would be the ones I would think would make winners over, say, Carolina, Vegas, or Minnesota. But we'll see how it works in practice. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Like if you enjoyed. Next video will probably be my match prediction for this weekend. So make sure you tune in tomorrow for that. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the next one.